I was raised Filipino, and then I went out to the world, saw more Filipinos, and felt a little confused as it like, am I supposed to just be Filipino? Is that the first thing? And then one day I just realized like, wait a minute, that's just one genuine, authentic aspect of who I am. So maybe it's not about one thing. Maybe it's just embracing all of you. That's what Oprah says, so you know it's true. Gonna be the kind of person who creates opportunities for others and who is a, hopefully a source of inspiration for others, Filipino or not. It's hard walking into a place being a queer, colored person going into a predominantly white space. The good thing is that people of color will help people of color. I definitely think that there is an identity that you bring as a Filipino because I don't know if it's something that I plan in my performance, it's just something that you are. I was born in a suburb of the Philippines. I'm first generation. I grew up in a very predominantly Filipino and Asian place, Daily City being that. I grew up hearing Tagalog every day in my house. My mom would yell at us, I mean, talk to us <laughs> in Tagalog. So I was used to that. My parents were from Manila and very traditional, you know, brought me to church and still had the accent. Diba? Ganon. Ano? Hui! So I was raised with a very powerful Filipino upbringing and energy. I knew I was Filipino, but I really wanted to be white. I wanted to be accepted. I wanted to feel like I belonged to everyone else. I knew a world existed outside of Dilly City, and I knew it had things I wanted. It had, I wanted to be a professional actor. I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to learn from people who were from different places. I wanted to experience the world. I wanted to interact with people from different disciplines, from different walks of life. I was kind of thirsty to experience the world. Part of that thirst came from knowing I only have so much in me right now, but I'm, I want more. I want more information. Kind of like, imagine wanting to go to college because you can't wait to learn all the things you're gonna learn. That's kind of how I felt like about the world. Technically, I have never been on Broadway. So what, what makes that significant in this story, or in my story, is that I spent over a decade trying to be on Broadway. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. That's what I thought I wanted. So I got to New York 2004. I just finished the national tour of 42nd Street. I had no place to live. I had a big duffel bag. I had all my dance shoes in it a 15 pound laptop, because Dell laptops were really heavy, a music binder like that thick. My office was the Starbucks on 52nd and Broadway, and I would stay there for hours, because I had no place to go. Where I stayed was a friend's place in Jersey, and I had to take two modes of transportation to get there. So this is what I went through every time I had to go into New York for, for auditions. I did that for two or three months. Actors will say, oh, I've auditioned so many times, I haven't booked anything, or like, I put myself on tape, I've recorded a voiceover, I haven't gotten a single job. It's like, it took me maybe a hundred, a hundred voiceover auditions before I landed one. A hundred, a hundred, a hundred files. That's a lot of files. And I love using that as an example because a lot of people want to hear yes in their life. They want the yes, you get the job. Yes, you get the promotion. Yes, you've accomplished this thing. Yes, you lost the weight. Yes, you fit to the genes. They want yes, but keep in mind, like in order to get to the yeses you want, you have an X amount of no's. When you are auditioning and putting yourself out there and you're getting no, a lot of people would see that as failure when I would highly disagree. Failure is when you choose to stop trying. Oh, it's all very hopeful, and I get like support from my my mom and my family. I was 30 pounds heavier, so I lost 30 pounds two years ago, and kept it off, and uh, been on a new journey physically and for my career. But then I didn't have that. The goal was different. The focus was different. When I was in New York, I got a job. I did Irving Berlin's White Christmas, the musical, on stage, original cast. Eventually, got to Broadway. has to be more. What could that be? What if? And then I started to play this what if game. I said, what if I did TV and film? It's like, oh, we haven't done that yet. You could do that. And I went further. I'm like, ha ha, what if you were famous? I went like crazy. Like, that's crazy to me. 
Who says, I want to be famous? My friends like all of all these Broadway credits. And then while I was in Here Lies Love, this audition came up. What? Josh Chang, crazy ex-girlfriend. Hmm, I'll audition for that. That seems cool. You're describing me, I'm gonna audition. And I got it. It took a lot of practice and it Honestly, it feels, it doesn't, it's not comfortable at all. I watched the first few episodes of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend season one, and I was horrified. <laughs> I was like, oh God. Um, I didn't know. As we got to know ourselves and these characters, the characters evolved. So if you look at Josh, first four episodes of season one versus last eight episodes of season four, those are very, very different people. And thankfully, I was, supported in those steps throughout the Josh Chan <laughs> arc of when he grows up and how he learns these things. Whenever I have an opportunity in my life, a job, so let's say I'm playing Josh or um, playing Detective Rudy Cruz, I use the job as a backdrop and an opportunity to develop who I am as a person. And four years later, we wrap the series, and shortly thereafter, I played the Filipino out gay detective in the south on season two of Insatiable, which I don't think I would have imagined ever. So I've been lucky. I, I get my trips to Disneyland, I get to travel a little bit, get to chill out, you know, but then I also get to work really hard and enjoy what I do genuinely. And inspire, which is another huge part of it. That's why I teach. I'm teaching at UCLA in a few weeks, I'm trying to plan a trip out to the Bay Area so I can teach in Daly City. Um, I'm teaching at my alumni PCPA in March, I think. So it's whenever I can, if I'm not working or auditioning or taking care of myself or my family or spending time with my husband or my friends, I'm trying to develop, develop my career, obviously, but I'm also trying to give back. There's a lot to be learned by being a teacher and that is thrilling to me. The idea that I can take something I, I've learned and I can apply it to the thing that I do and it's very beneficial to me. But to be able to take that and show it to someone and go, play with that toy for a little bit. Now try this, now try this. And to watch their eyes light up and discover something about themselves that they didn't know was there, that's, that's life. That's a huge gift. Without sounding like a cliche, we are, we are to a certain degree the new trailblazers. So I'm riding the coattails of Paulo Montalban of, oh my gosh, Rufio, Dante, Dante Bosco. So, you know, I'm writing certain coattails too, to a certain degree, but I'm also trying to carve a new path in hopes that the industry and the world will start to see us in a different light. And then maybe that'll help bring focus and attention to new talent, new people who are willing to work hard and go through the ups and downs, who are willing to risk failure at the possibility of success. I think when you ask what's super American about me, what, the first thing that comes to mind is land of opportunity. That's what my parents wanted for me. I asked my mom, what was your goal by bringing your kids here? And she was like, oh, you know, like I wanted to give you guys opportunities that I didn't have. When she said that, I knew there was a lot of that that she wasn't taking for herself. She wasn't taking her piece of that pie. So yeah, I'm gonna live my American dream of land of opportunity and development and reaching for your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. I think that's the most American thing about me, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that that was, wasn't rooted in like a Filipino spirit deep, 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 deep down from like childhood.